Example number three. In part A, we want to set up an expression for the integral going from 1 to 3 of the function e to the x dx as a limit of sums. Okay, first let's identify what f of x represents. Well, we know that f of x is equal to e to the x, that is the function. Okay, we also know that the value of the lower limit a is equal to 1. We know that the value of the upper limit is equal to 3. Okay, and now we need to find delta x. And remember that delta x is going to equal b minus a over the value of n. So we're going to have 3 minus 1 over n, which is equal to 2 over n. Okay, so now that we know that, we now know the value of the first x subscript 0, which is the initial, which is 1. Okay, so recall that we have x subscript 1, and remember that x subscript i is equal to x subscript 0 plus x, sorry, um, plus i times delta x. So we know that x subscript uh, 0 is 1 plus 1 times 2 over n. So we end up getting 1 plus 2 over n. For x subscript 2, we're going to have 1 plus 2 times 2 over n, which is equal to 1 plus 4 over n. And so x subscript 3 is going to equal 1 plus 3 times 2 over n which is going to equal 1 plus 6 over n. So then what would be the ith term? Well, the ith term is then going to equal 1 plus the value of 2 times whatever i is over n. So now we know what that represents. Okay, now in step number 3, we want to be able to um, write an expression as a limit of sums. So from theorem 4, okay, and let's recall what theorem 4 states. Okay, so theorem 4, let me go ahead and move this over just a tiny bit so we can make a little bit more room here. Okay, so what does theorem 4 tell us? Well, we can see what the integral represents. Okay, and so we have the integral that goes from 1 to 3 of the function e to the x dx. Okay, and what that equals is the limit as n approaches infinity of the summation of i is equal to 1 to n of the function f x subscript i, which is the height times the width. So in this scenario, we have the limit as n approaches infinity of the summation of i is equal to 1 to n of the function. Now, what does x subscript i represent? Well, we determined that over here we know that that equals 1 plus 2i over n. So this is going to be 1 plus 2i over n times the value of delta x, which is 2 over n. Okay. And so now we can say that, okay, this limit as n approaches infinity we can factor out the constant, okay, which is 2 over n times the summation of i is equal to 1 to n. And now this becomes the input on the function e to the x. So therefore, this is going to be e, and x is going to be the power of 1 plus 2i divided by n. So therefore, that's 
how this integral will be written as a limit of sums. Okay, now for part B, okay, I'm just going to show you this. This isn't something that you're going to have to actually do in this scenario, but it's saying use the computer algebra system to evaluate the expression, okay, which is this following expression here. So if we ask a computer algebra, algebra system to evaluate the sum and simplify, we would obtain the following. We would get the summation of i is equal to 1 to n of e to the power of 1 plus 2i over n. We would get the following. We would have e to the power of 3n plus 2 divided by n minus e to the power of n plus 2 divided by n all over e to the power of 2 divided by n minus 1. Okay, and then if we wanted to ask, you know, the algebra, the computer algebra system to evaluate the limit, then we would get the following. We would say, okay, the integral that goes from 1 to 3 of e to the x dx is then going to equal the limit as n approaches infinity. We would be able to factor out a 2 over n times the following. We would get e to the 3n plus 2 divided by n minus e to the n plus 2 divided by n all over e to the 2 divided by n minus 1 which would eventually give us e to the third power minus e. Okay now the goal of this is to see that this can take, you know, some bit of a time, but we're going to learn a much easier method for the evaluation of integrals in the next section. Okay, now the one thing I did want to show um, at the conclusion is what you, what you want to do at the very beginning of the problem is what the graph looks like. Okay, so this is the graph. So if we take a look at the integral, it's going from 1 to 3, right? So we have our 1 to 3 and this is the graph of e to the x and when we wanted to find out what is the area of that shaded region okay and that's what kind of what we're looking for so you know it's important to be able to see visually what that graph is going to look like for this particular example and other examples that you'll see in the future